What's up guys? Well in this video I'm going to be doing a little Linux myth busting. There's a lot of misinformation coming from the Linux community about Linux. Really? I think some of it's coming from this guy's video. Now before I start, I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. I'm not trying to bash on Linux in any way here. Uh, really? I'm actually becoming a, uh, an exclusive Linux user here. Uh, I've stopped dual oh. booting. I'm completely 100% Arch Linux on this machine here, so... Oh my goodness, so you're an expert now. Oh God, well then I explained everything. <laughs> now I feel much better. Just the misinformation coming out of the community that I have a problem with. And I'm going to attempt to debunk some of the claims made by the community about Linux in this video. Okay. Um, I have a whole laundry list of things that I could debunk, uh, focusing on this page here. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of them, or else this video is going to be really, really long. I'm only going to focus on a couple of key things in this video. A lot of expert it's Linux really users awesome. are completely convinced that what they're saying is absolutely true. What exactly are you trying to get across in this video? So, we'll start with malware, because that's where he started. Okay. Uh, and we'll just go down the list. Okay. Uh, this is a video I've been wanting to make for a very long time. Oh. I just haven't found myself in a scenario to be able to replicate some of this stuff in order oh. to prove my point. Okay. Okay, well, let's get back to your little, uh, your, your little, uh, your debunking and your myth busting here, buddy. Because uh, you obviously are an expert, because you are uh, no longer dual boot. Now, I can actually prove <gasps> what I'm saying to you. You can? We'll start with malware. Because as a matter of fact, I've got a malware infection on this very machine at this very moment, which I'm going to demonstrate. What kind of infection you got? Oh, on your computer, I'm sorry. So, I have Sophos installed on my Arch Linux system. Aren't you special? And I will demonstrate for you right now that I have a malware infection. Okay. So I opened up my uh, terminal, and I scanned it with Sophos. Ooh, I narrowed it down to a with Sophos. If I can go back to my commands and find it. Yeah, here you go. Pay attention to his commands. Sophos antivirus scan. Well, we don't need the verbose mode. We can get rid of that. Uh, I'm sure you don't want to show up files in there. So one of the imagination temp files has malware in it, and I'm going to prove that right now. If I can just find the command that I used. Oh, what, what was that? <laughs> what was that? What was that? All right, well, Hang on a second. We got to go back. Let's take a look at something here. I just have to... Imagination. So one of the imagination on. temp files on. has malware in it. Pay attention. I'm going to prove that right now. If I can just find the command that I what? Wait a minute. What is this? What is that? Dude, you already ran a command to remove the malware. If he already ran the command to remove the malware, how does he still have malware? Why would he have malware? Obviously, he's staging this whole thing. He wants to make sure it's going to work correctly. This is going to end up biting him in the butt more than once, and I'll point that out when he, you know, setting things up the stage. But he already has this in his history file. Obviously, he's already removed it, and, and how did he get it there? He knows how it got there. He put it there. All right, so let's go ahead and scan this directory, because this is where let's the do. is that I found from earlier. If I had to scan the whole system, it'd take about 45 minutes, so I'm just going to go to the directory that I found before. So mm -hmm. we'll do this scan here. Okay. That scan will take a few moments. Do, 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 do. And as you can see, that directory has malware. I'm in the way a little bit. Oh no! <laughs> I'm in the way. Look, hold on. Got to hold on. I got to pause. First of all, I'm a little bit in the way right there. I apologize. Sorry about that. But let's look at this. So, Troj, Espin, E S P I O N, and Troj F A R F L I. Dash gen. First of all, they're exe files. Why would anything designed for Linux have an exe file? That would so stand out like a sore thumb. Whoever wrote that wouldn't, wouldn't be doing a very good job hiding something if it stands out like a sore thumb. So if you look it up online, there's no Linux variant. So the only thing he's proved is that you can you can put malware on a Linux machine. This isn't going to run. This program right here, this is not going to run on this machine, so you still don't have to worry about it. Here it says, can't just go around and delete and modify it. No nothing on this page says that you can't get a virus. 
So you really don't have to worry about them because the way Linux is designed, even if, even if you've got one, it's not going to do much, and they're they're typically easier to remove because they they have no access. I don't know what this silly guy with this. I got. I I caught him in a dumb expression. That's hold on. This one. E2FS progs is something that is included with EXT two, three, and four. <sighs> Nobody ever said that this can't be fragmented with Linux. But you have to understand how EXT uh, file system works. And he clearly doesn't. And coming up in his, um, what he's talking about, um, there will be a point where he's very confused. I'm going to catch that confusion. I'm going to explain that confusion. And it's due to the way EXT file system works and why most machines will never need to be defragmented that run Linux, okay? Go sudo e4 defrag. Tax C will give us a fragmentation count. This is great. We'll the it's coming up. Hold on. Check. We'll just go read. This is awesome. Hold on. And there we go. Hold on, look. It gave us a fragmentation score. Uh, we do have a couple of fragmented files. Look at this face. So fragmented Mama. files here. Um, <laughs> no, no. You notice how he pauses? He, you know, look at his face. Okay. That right there is the face of a man who is confused. He is completely puzzled. He, he has this demeanor like he expected to be so much more in these fragmented files. Just look, watch, watch the way he acts, he acts going forward. He just... You know, it, it's like he's totally confused and baffled by this situation. So, so here's your fragmented files. Uh, Skype, uh, two of the Sophos log files, uh, our main VR log file, and it looks like our Google Chrome cache. That's great. It's like anything to just take attention away from, like, the fact that he's got five fragmented files on a hard drive. I right, just want to show you something real quick. Um, I'm going to run the same command he ran. Give it a second. Okay, we've got a few um, files that are fragmented. So what we're going to do is we're going to just um, see if we can make that disappear from the fragment fragmentation list here. And all we're going to do is write the file see what happens interesting Did you notice that file number three var log WTMP is gone and we have uh, an, another file in here that has has uh, is fragmented uh, and what am I showing you here this file was fragmented okay and as soon as I wrote, rewrote that file to disk, it was written contiguously and is no longer fragmented. If you'll notice, all the fragmented files that are shown here are logs. There's no other fragmented file here. They're all logs. And the reason is the log is being written in a way that it's I'm not even sure how I can explain this um, we're not opening and then saving the file the file is constantly being written to therefore in that instance the head of that of the drive can't always write it contiguously because what happens is as you're filling up those blocks, you eventually fill up enough blocks to the point where you're going to get to another file. And it must jump after that. Alright, I just want to demonstrate um, how this works with the file system and how log files kind of write and how they can be fragmented most of the time. So these B's, each one of these capital B's is a, a block that has been written to and this string of B's will consider one file 
and then we're going to use the um, lowercase r to represent a log file that is currently writing to disk and adding to over time. So it's going to continue to add and write until it gets to this string of blocks. And then it's going to skip it and continue to write. And that's how a log file gets fragmented. Now, if it does get fragmented, it's minuscule. And the fragmentation is still such that it's really not going to impede the performance of your hard drive. Um, it takes a lot to get uh, Linux completely fragmented to the point where, where it's dr drive thrashing. Now, in this scenario, I'm going to simulate what happens with a hard drive that's really, really full. Okay, so these strings of Bs are blocks that are written, and we'll assume that they're contiguous files written to disk. So what happens is, let's say a the, the Linux um, now wants to write a file that is 10 blocks long. The first thing it's going to do is pick the biggest chunk of space it has, in which case um, I think they're all the same. So we're going to start with the cursor is, and Linux is going to start writing its 10 block file to disk, and it's going to, you know, so it's going to start writing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it's going to write like that. So now you have a fragmented file. Now let's say it's going to write a 15 block file. So now Linux is going to find the next biggest space available. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So now that file has became, become a bit more fragmented. So now the hard drive is writing, writing fragmented files. Now if this was your file system, you'd be in a lot of trouble because there's only one block left. Or, or well, two, two or three at the end there. But, um, you know, this only happens when the hard drive is really full and there's only a little chunks of space for Linux to say, hey, I need a space to put these blocks. I'm going to find a big spot. I'm going to bunch. I'm going to write them. So what he fails to understand is that, yes, there's defragmentation tools, but Linux, by nature, kind of always defragments itself whenever you're writing a file. And also... It explains the confusion on his face after he ran that command. The look on his face was like, wait a minute, these aren't even the same files, and there's less files, and this, that, and the other thing. So, do you need to defragment Linux? No. Could you possibly have to? Sure. If you had a hard drive that was completely full, and you were writing to wherever you could write to, and it was so full that you couldn't really defragment it, yeah, you're going to have a really fragmented drive, but that's not Linux's fault. That's your fault. You will only have to defragment if you do something to cause that kind of situation. You know, Windows, the entire hard drive gets fragmented. It gets ridiculous. That is not a need for fragmentation. You do not need to fragment because of five fragmented files. You need to fragment when every file is fragmented and your hard drive is thrashing trying to read. So, which you just kind of said that you don't have to ever defrag. Is completely false. No, 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 you're wrong. You're just, you're just completely wrong. The next thing that I want to talk about is system reboots. This website says that you rarely have to reboot. You could run for years without needing to reboot. Spadry also echoes that in his when it does the video. It's also not true. No, 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 you're wrong. You're just, you're just completely wrong. There are a lot of libraries and dependencies that sit in your system memory as you're using your system 
if any of those things get updated, you won't be using the new versions until they get cleared from memory. No, no shit. Really? Look. <sighs> what kind of point is he trying to... What kind of point are you trying to make? The point that Linux can run for years without being rebooted. It can run that instance for eternity and not need to be rebooted. Just because Linux doesn't ask you to reboot doesn't mean you don't have to. Now, most updates you don't. Like if you know, you just, don't don't he doesn't even understand the whole thing. Like he okay. doesn't get it. But if any of your libraries dependencies the old ones that are so running at that point in time will still be able to run for years and years and years without a problem. Update, but I'm talking about other smaller stuff. Um, just because you don't get prompted to All your libraries and dependencies are not and, um, Linux. They're the other software. I can demonstrate how things stay in memory and continue to run. Uh, 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 Firefox, I can't really do it with system uh, What he's about to do is like to what he probably did I'm before he did his video, which like inadvertently got rid of all his non-contiguous files. I'll let him go from the other back. Here's Firefox. It's running. It works. Okay. So, I'm going to leave Firefox open and completely uninstall it. And uh, I'll show you what I'm trying to get across here. So, here in Arch Linux, the command to completely uninstall something, including its dependencies, is sudo pacman. Capital R, lowercase s. You should say the two commands. Because you're using two commands. So. I really need to get a better password. <laughs> okay, so. Do you want to remove these packages? Firefox. Yes, let's remove Firefox. Okay, Firefox has been removed from the system. But if it's been removed from the system... Why is it still here? How is Because it's running in memory. And it'll run in memory for as long as you want it to run in memory and not be an issue. That's the point. Is it? That we can still use it? Well, that goes back to what I was saying a moment ago. If you have components loaded in system memory... Firefox is not Linux. The kernel is Linux. Firefox is not Linux. The kernel is Linux. If you leave, so you're trying to talk about a program running in the background that isn't Linux. Okay, it's it's not Linux. Linux is the kernel. That kernel can run for years and years and years and handle memory and never have to re be rebooted for like I don't know whatever. It's a monolithic kernel. It loads all into kernel space. Listen, I have. I have run updates on my machine <clears throat> and not rebooted and so long that the next update came and overwrote those updates and left it go and it was fine and it still ran. Yes, I wasn't using the latest instance of the software, <laughs> but it still worked. That's the point. If you left it and never rebooted, it would still work. It would still run. That's the point. He's failing to grasp that concept. He's talking about programs running in memory and having to update. That still doesn't change the fact that if you left a computer running without updating, it still run. It will continue to run in system memory until run, run. So, oh, God, man. really, man, why would you make this video? One of the claims that is made on this website. Um, and also in Spatry's Linux does what window on video is that since there's no activation in Linux and because the drivers are built into the kernel you can take your hard drive out of one computer stick it in another and it'll boot and it'll work that is okay I know where he's going already with this I, I... Yes, obviously, if you take your Linux installation, 64-bit installation, out of your 64-bit machine and put it into a 32-bit machine, yeah, it's not going to boot, okay? Because that's not legacy. But if you take a 32-bit installation, it'll work in a 64-bit, and it'll work in a 32-bit. 
most of the time it won't even boot in another machine because most modern Linux distributions use a unique unified identifier which if the numbers don't match it will refuse to boot. Now a lot of the older Linux systems using a slash dev configuration will boot uh, but you're talking maybe 10% of all the available Linux distros these days. No, 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 you're wrong. You're just, you're just completely wrong. I can take the hard drive out of this machine and I can put it into my wife's computer and it will boot. And what this guy is talking about, never mind, he's just, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Probably would have been true, but today... Most modern Linux distributions use a, a unique unified identifier for the FS tab. So, if I take the hard drive out of this computer and put it in another computer, it's not going to boot. Even though this page says it will, and videos like Spatrix and many others also say it will, it will not. Are you going to prove that? Go do it. Because these distributions use a unique unified identifier for the FS tab and it has to match that identifier code with your system in order to boot. Alright, we have handheld. This Woo! is the Arch Linux Fine. machine that we were just on. I'm going to take the hard drive out. I'm not going to take it out of its uh, tray, because uh, I don't need to do that. I'm going to move over here to the desktop, um, and I'm going to go ahead and plug it into here. Uh, this is the media center that's plugged into the TV. Um, now, this is a dual-core Pentium integrated Intel graphics chipset, and so is that. So this desktop and laptop have similar hardware. Uh, there's no significant difference between the two other than one's you know, a laptop with mobile chips, and this one's a desktop. Let's go ahead and hook this in. Okay, so we're all hooked up down here. All right. Let's boot it up and I'll demonstrate for you. I'm going to have to tell the BIOS first to change your drives over. So we'll have to do that first. Yeah, it already prompts us for that. So uh, the following configurations changes uh, have occurred. Press F1 to save changes. Yes. Okay, now it's going to try to boot that drive. Okay, here's Grub. Right, it's going to try to boot it for us. And there we go. It's not booting. <laughs> because, yep, there you go. So, error. Unable to find root device UUID C9AB8683. All right, we have my computer and HP running Ubuntu Linux. My wife's computer are running Windows 7. We'll go ahead and shut these down. Yeah, I'll power that down. And we'll also shut that one down. And this one is going to take like six years. This one's probably almost done. So let's see. Yeah, that one's done. So while that one's uh, continuing to shut down, I will start on this one by taking the hard drive out. Hard drive. Take that. Don't want to lose my screws. We have to take it out of the drive caddy. I'm pretty sure it's not going to fit to my wife's machine. And just in case we'll take them out so we don't have to worry about it. Because I will have to put it all the way into that into her machine. I'm pretty sure. Right. My hard drive. Acer.
That's it. All right. Our hard drive. Let's see. One screw. Again, we don't want to lose the screw. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we'll take it out of the cat. That's her hard drive. That's that's Windows on that one. That's Linux on this one. Okay. And what we're gonna do is put the battery in. Let's see what happens. Da da da. Oh da da da. Da 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 da. Da da da. Hey! It's a boom to booting on another computer from the hard drive in mine. Not a problem here. What's going on with uh, what's his face? I, I'm not sure, but that seems to be booting to me. Let's give it a second, see what happens. Let's see if it boots all the way up. I'm pretty sure it's going to. And, ha, huh, we have a mouse. Oh, look at that. Good old login screen for Ubuntu. So apparently, uh, he's doing something wrong. I don't know what it is, but from what I can see right here, I just took one uh, hard drive out of one machine, put it into another machine, no problem. Look at that. There's at least the boogers flying out. There's <laughs> boogers flying out over here. <gasps> Huge! Uh, I'd say about 10% of them are still using yeah. the older slash dev uh, method. That method will work. Are you, where are you uh, getting your percentages from? But it's just not the way it's done anymore. So. Yeah. And I'm just here to set the record straight. Set shit straight. Your face is huge. And we're back. I threw the drive back in this computer, booted right up. So, we went over malware. We went over disk defragmentation. We went over system reboots after updates. And, we over, and you're an uh, idiot. You know, 